Oh, yeah. G'day, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show that isn't afraid to ask the question, what's love got to do, got to do, got to do with it? Tonight, two teams of music lovers face off in a battle of music knowledge. Leading our first team is a New Zealander whose name is incredibly appropriate. Not only is his last name Bro, <laughs> his first initial is A. <laughs> if his nickname was Choice, he'd be Choice A Bro. <laughs> Please welcome Alan Bro. <laughs> Alan's first team member used to dress up in her Sunday best, including a handbag, just to watch <laughs> Countdown on telly. Because she thought it was classy. It was classy. <laughs> Clearly, we're no Countdown. It's comedian Terry Siakis. <laughs> Alan's final team member is an accomplished musician. He's won a BAFTA award, been nominated for two Oscars and has provided the music for the movies Elizabeth, Shine and Strictly Ballroom. Please welcome David Hirschfelder. Thank you. Thank you. We can't lose. No. <laughs> when our second team leader was asked at kindergarten what she wanted to be when she grew up, apparently she replied, a fish. <laughs> <laughs> she likes her water change regularly. Don't overfeed her. From Triple J, it's Miff Warhurst. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Miss first guest tonight is an AFI award-winning actress and musician who was raised on rock and roll. <laughs> She's sultrier than cans in wet season. Please welcome Loene Carmen. <laughs> and Miff's final guest is an English comedian who, as part of his act, has sent a nana into space tied to a hot air balloon, <laughs> glued meat to his forehead to warn off amorous vegans, and played a saxophone solo on a squirrel. If that doesn't make any sense, go and see him live. It could only be Ross Noble. <laughs> right, let's get straight into round one. Our first game tonight is called Know Your Product. Each team captain gets to pick a topic that everybody on the panel will be quizzed on. Now, your choices tonight are Pop Goes Classical. Mm -hmm. That's basically when uh, classical music is used in current songs. OK. West Coast Country Rock. Uh, the Los Angeles sound of the 70s, uh, Nick Cave, fairly self-explanatory, and Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Alan, would you like to pick a topic for your team? Uh, well, I'm thinking that uh, I believe you've had some experience with uh, classical music. Yes, it's... Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. While all my friends were playing football, I was chained to the piano. So, yes, I've had a classical upbringing and proud of it. Did you still play football chained to a piano? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you were in goal, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? <laughs> you'd just be a bang and a dong, and you'd just peep out from behind. <laughs> try again, try again. <laughs> because of your footballing prowess, uh, we're going to go pop goes classical, I think. Excellent. Uh, Miff, how about you? What, which topic would you like? Well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Nick Cave, and I think given I've got Loeen on my team and you grew up around a lot of these people and yeah. they spend a bit of time and, and I possibly... thought you were going to say because I've got experience of kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, I thought you could with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, for that reason, that was better than mine. We're going to go Nick Cave. All righty. Uh, we'll start with Pop Goes Classical, which is when contemporary music borrows from the classics. Everyone on your buzzers, let's play Spicks and Specs. Your first question. Paying homage to his favourite classical composer, who had a worldwide hit in 1986 with his song Rock Me Amadeus? <laughs> What was it? Falco. Oh. Yes. It was Falco. Nice work. Oh. Oh, sorry. I know it sounds like a bird. Next <laughs> question worth two points. What is the common name of this Beethoven piece and which Beatles song is based on it being played in reverse? Oh, It's the Moonlight Sonata. Yes, it is. And uh, Penny Lane? I'll give you one point for that. It was Moonlight Sonata. If you guys know which Beatles song it is, I'll give you a point as well. Um, well, it's not Hard Day's Night. No. <laughs> um, or Love Me Do. No. Um, um, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Um, uh, um, hey Jude. Hey Jude. OK, we'll go with Hey Jude. Hey Jude. Uh, it was Moonlight Sonata. The song was Because by the Beatles. Have a listen to it. Because the world is... Oh, well... Finally, for three points, name this Sting song, the piece of classical music it has been based on and the person who originally composed it. Yes? OK, I believe the Sting song is 
Uh, Russians have children too, or some Russians. Love Russians. Love Russians. It's just called Russians. It's just called Russians. Okay, yes. Russians. Yes. Russians yes. have yes. children too. That's one of the lines of it as well. You, not, get, you do know that Russians don't give birth in the normal way. You <laughs> what, what you do is you open a Russian up, and then a smaller one. Goes... <laughs> I used to be a Russian midwife. <laughs> <laughs> so, Russians. It's called Russians. Yep. It's based on a piece of music by... Um, Mazorsky. Mazorsky? No. no. Oh. Oh, oh. It's I'll give you a point. It is Prokofiev. Do you know the name of the piece of music? No idea. No. It is it's the Lieutenant Kije Suite, Opus 60. Oh, of course oh. it is. So that's a point each. We well, see. I was only oh. listening to that never, ever in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on to Australia's own man in black, Nick Cave. For one point, your first question. What is the next line of this song? And the last thing I heard was a martyred word. Oh, you're a bit dumb, love. <laughs> <laughs> Was it? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to fish. You've knocked over me bed. <laughs> It was muttered. <laughs> um, they call me the wild rose. There's <laughs> something like that. Okay, I'll give you all a hint. Good this point. is right before he clubs her to death. Brace yourself. How's He's that a hint? He must die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look over there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the clip. As he knelt above me with a rock in his face. Oh, of course. So, to answer your question, Al, how is that a clue? When someone's kneeling above you with a rock in their fist, <laughs> they're usually about to club you to death. Or put it on your bonsai garden. <laughs> well, there is that. You've now put in my head the image of you lying in your bonsai garden <laughs> with somebody kneeling over you going, where would you like this, Al? <laughs> and you're just going, put it near me. <laughs> Me Gulliver. <laughs> <laughs> Your next question worth two points. <laughs> Nick Cave currently plays with the Bad Seeds. Your question is: Name two other bands he's played with throughout his career. Uh, over this side. Uh, the Birthday Boys. Birthday Party. Bar Bar birthday Party. And oh, what was the one before that? That's ridiculous that I don't know. Come on, it was something about Come it was on, the Alan. Boys Next Door or something like that. Uh, the Boys Next Door and the Birthday Party. Oh, well done. Oh, we do it. Oh, that's extraordinary. <laughs> And before any Nick Cave fans get up in arms, I know they were both names for the same band, but we decided to give them points because either of those names were appropriate. I don't know what happens when Nick Cave fans get up in arms. <laughs> oh, that's it, I'm dying my hair blacker. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, for three points, name the first three albums released by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. <laughs> or everyone go quiet. Uh, OK, does it have to be in any particular order? I no. hope not, because it's not going to be. No. Uh, from Her to Eternity. Yep. Um, Kicking Against the Pricks. Yes. Oh, excellent. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say it was called Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, the first one. Well, you got From Her to Eternity, you got Kicking Against the Pricks. Anyone on this side want to have a guess at the other one? Nick Cave's Crazy Christmas Dance Party. <laughs> 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 He did it. He did a Christmas album. It <laughs> wasn't very popular. It was <laughs> just no. have a good Christmas. <laughs> it was very close to Christmas album. It was called The First Born Is Dead. Oh, of course it was. Oh, oh, cheer damn. Up. Yeah. I grew up in um, country Victoria and Nick Cave was uh, cousins of people who lived up the road from me. And I remember stories of them whinging about this cousin that they had called Nick Cave, <laughs> who's, who would never go outside at Christmas time. And the father spent the whole time saying, Nick, just get outside and play some cricket, will you? Join the family. <laughs> play some cricket. Wouldn't have a bar of it. It was great. And then I remember thinking about it years later, went, oh my, that was Nick Cave. <laughs> <laughs> and up the street from me. <laughs> in spite of his punk rock roots, Nick Cave actually had a song, People Ain't No Good, included on the soundtrack of the film Shrek 2. For those of you who've seen the film, the song was used in the scene where Shrek breaks into Donkey's house to steal his VCR. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after the first round, Miff's team on two points, Alan's team way out in front on six points. Oh, yeah. well done. Yeah, <laughs> this round is called So Mix and Match A Lot. Uh, what happens here is each team is given three artists and three interesting facts about them. What you guys have to do is match the artist to the fact. Uh, Alan, Terry and David. Yes. Your artists are composer Arnold Schoenberg, Ooh, dear. country singer and former handbag to Julia Roberts, <laughs> oh, Lyle yeah, Lovett, yeah. and the only traveller on the freeway of love, Aretha Franklin. 
Your job is to match the artist to their fears, uh, which are a fear of cows, of course, <laughs> a fear of flying, and fear of the number 13. Right. Okay, so we have well, to match these people with their fears. I, uh, yeah, I'm I mean. Tipping maybe Lyle Lovett's got a fear of cows ever since he's divorced from Julia Roberts. Ooh. <laughs> but then, Very harsh. But then also, he it's possible, just particularly looking at that photo, it's possible that he has a fear of uh, flying, given that no doubt he has to stow that hair in the overhead <laughs> <laughs> every time he flies. It's good hair, isn't it? Um, uh, Schoenberg, I don't know a huge amount. Do you know much no. about Schoenberg? Hey, um, he pioneered the... Um, uh, this is one thing I did remember from my uh, university education, which was very short. He did pioneer a serial composition, which has nothing to do with cornflakes. It's to do with... Um, uh, you are only allowed to write 12... There's 12 notes on the scale, and you, you're not allowed to repeat the same note twice. So it's called 12-tone composition. So to me, that would be a great reason for, for him to be afraid of number 13. Because oh. there is no 13th note. Yeah. Of course not. Or yeah. it could be because the life expectancy in the 1900s was about 13 years old. <laughs> doesn't Aretha Franklin get buses everywhere when she goes on tour? Like, doesn't she... Ooh. She doesn't... She drives everywhere? She also doesn't like going over mountains. So uh, maybe a fear of heights thing. Yeah, maybe of she's flying. got the fear of flying. Well, there we go. Uh, Aretha Franklin, fear of flying. Schoenberg is afraid of the giant gravestone with the number 13 on it. And uh, Lowell Lovett doesn't like cows because I believe he was attacked by a cow and it broke his leg. That is exactly right, Alan Bro. <laughs> we got there, right? Exactly right. Schoenberg has a fear of the number 13. Aretha Franklin is afraid to fly. And Lyle Lovett has a fear of cows. How can you be a country singer when you have a fear of cows? Exactly. Yes. It's like a rap artist having a fear of jewellery. <laughs> uh, composer Arnold Schoenberg, by the way, did have a fear of the number 13, which is known scientifically as triskaidekaphobia. He was born on the 13th of the month. Uh, he was afraid of turning 76 because 7 and 6 add up to 13. Uh, he was also convinced he would die on the Friday the 13th. All of this was in his head throughout his entire life. Now, the story goes... Can we have some mood lighting for this? Nice. <laughs> the story goes that on Friday the 13th of July 1951, at the age of 76, Schoenberg spent the entire day in bed convinced he would die. At the end of the day, his wife entered his room to tell him off for wasting the day so stupidly. He looked at her, said the word harmony, and died at exactly 13 minutes to midnight. Then there was a banging on the roof of the car and his girlfriend had to kill his head! Right, let's... <laughs> Let's move on to the next team at this particular point. Your artists are wholesome 1950 singer Pat Boone, the drummer behind the Beatles and the voice behind Thomas the Tank Engine, Ringo Starr, and singer from Adelaide Rockers The Super Jesus, Sarah McLeod. Your job now is to match these people with the products they have endorsed. Okay, the products are motorcycles, a real estate agency, and an acne treatment. <laughs> which of those artists endorsed which of those products? Well, Ringo Starr is definitely my favourite Beatle and I reckon he'd pretty much endorse anything. And of course, Ringo Starr uh, did the voice of um, Thomas the Tank Engine. Right. And he got such a love of doing that, he now does the voice of any vehicle he sees. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he'll just be walking along in the Thomas and Percy jumped into the station. Here comes Davy Ducati coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah McLeod, she yes. is, she's one of Australia's finest rock, rock chicks and she, um, she might have played for a lot of kids at a lot of festivals so she might be the one to endorse the, the zit cream, possibly. Mm -hmm. It could have been like in Dolly magazine before she was a rock star. Mm. I can oh. see that. Yeah. She's a pretty girl. She and could have had a modelling model. career. She was a model, yeah. Pat, Pat Boone used to be Ozzy Osbourne's next door neighbour. Yes. You still look at me like so yeah, you he actually you? knows something. <laughs> <laughs> I know you look at me like he's just made that up. No, no, like I just got no, Pat Boone used to kill chinchillas and make shows out of it. That is a genuine thing. Pat Boone used to live next door to Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, so therefore, real estate. Um, there might be a connection there. Look, I agree with you there. I think we'll go with uh, Pat Boone uh, selling real estate. Although I think the zit cream would have to be Ringo Starr because he's wrong enough to do that. And uh, Sarah McLeod, well, I know she's a pretty active lady, yeah, so I am guy. actually saying she gets uh, endorsement from the motorbike. Okay. I can tell you the correct answers, the correct links between those people are Sarah McLeod from the Super Jesus endorsed 
Motorcycles. Oh, well done. Yeah. Nice work. Good work. Ringo Starr lent his celebrity to a real estate agency. <sighs> and Pat Boone endorsed the acne treatment. Oh. Those were the links. So you got one point, Miff. As well as providing the voice of Thomas the Tank Engine, Ringo Starr, this is true, Ringo Starr has just joined forces in the last couple of weeks with the guy behind the Hulk and Spider-Man, comic book legend Stan, Stan Lee. Lee. They're going to create a Ringo Starr superhero. Oh, no. <laughs> Fantastic. Finally! Finally! A beetle that can deflect bullets and knives. <laughs> Are you sure that he's not just going to appear as the least popular of the Fantastic Four? <laughs> <laughs> After that round, uh, uh, Miff's team are on five points, Alan's team way out in front on nine points. Oh, well done. Well done, all. Right, let's get straight into round three now. This next round is a new one for Spicks and Specs, and it's called Sample Mania. Here's how, how it works. Each team will hear short snippets of songs, all mixed uh, together. You have to listen carefully and identify as many of those songs as you can. There's a bit of a record scratch at the beginning and the end. Everything in the middle, you have to tell me what it is. Miff, Loeen and Ross, you're up first. Let's put the needle on the record. Here are your songs. Must take a trip to California. What were those five songs? I think I got the first two. Billie Jean. Yeah. Is the first one, second one? I think it's How Much Is That Doggy in the Window. That's going to be your second choice? Yep. Yep. I got the fifth one. I've forgotten all Guns and Roses. It was the 1812 Overture was the next one. And then the one after that was Waterloo Sunset by the Kinks. And then it was uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Yes. Yeah. Let's <laughs> have oh, a listen. What happened there? Sorry, I just channeled somebody who actually knew something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through them and check. <laughs> Billie Jean. Yeah. How much Take is that doggy in the window? To California. The 1812 Overture by Tchaikovsky. Waterloo Sunset by the Kinks. And Sweet Child of Mine by Yay! <laughs> Alan, Terry and David. It's time to pay attention to our house DJ. Ready? Yes. Here are your songs. Working Rolling Stones. Yep, satisfaction. satisfaction. Um, um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, that's right. I've now completely forgotten all of them. <laughs> so have I. Yeah, uh, Bolero, Bolero was in there. The last one. Um, um, uh, I want to live in America by Leonard Bernstein. Yes, yeah, um, and what was the other one? Um, okay, we've got. I was hoping you knew. Yeah, no, sorry, I don't have a. Right, I was good on the first. Just take your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just be calm. Yeah, just relax. Yeah. Calm blue ocean. Just try. Yeah. Just, calm blue ocean. Just, that's it. Just calm blue ocean. take your time. No, no, no! <laughs> just, just relax. You'll okay. get it. Just, just. What? Time's up, I'm afraid. <laughs> I was relaxing. And I was leaving it. I was going to allow it to organically come out. Oh, was it relaxed? By Frankie goes to home. Oh! Listen to check those songs, they were in order. <laughs> Satisfaction by yeah. Rolling Stones, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, America, West Side Story, yeah. Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, oh, yeah. and Ravel's Bolero. I will give four points to this side and I'll give you a point for getting uh, Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> that means Miff's team has made a bit of a comeback. They are on 11 <laughs> points, Alan's team out in front on 13 points. Oh, wow! Yeah. It's time now for round four. Now, if you've seen Spicks and Specs before, you'll know that we normally play a game at this point of the show called Substitute. Yes. Uh, this week, we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, don't worry, Substitute will be back next week. Just needs some time on its own to clear its head and see other quiz shows, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, we're going to try to resurrect a little bit of rock and roll. Now, some of you oldies might remember that once upon a time, rock stars used to trash hotel rooms. Oh, yeah. These days, it seems to be all about the music and the fans and being artistic. <laughs> it used to be about rocking and rolling and just making a mess wherever you were. Um, now, I'm going to ask the two musos on set. Uh, in fact, I'm going to ask you first, Loeen, because you've toured with John Farnham, so I reckon you probably won't have too many rock and roll stories. Correct. Uh, oh, there was that time he left Earl Grey tea everywhere. <laughs> uh, have you ever completely trashed a hotel room? Have you gone mad? Have you gone stuff? I'm really ashamed to say no. Oh. See, the young kids I'm of today... Sorry. David, on tour, have you done that kind of stuff? No, but I've watched someone do it. 
<laughs> really? Oh. Yes, I know this is this is going to shock people because it was the John Farnham Band and it's not a very rock and roll institution, I know. But it was the drummer. He completely dismantled a hotel room and, and also the minibar, I might add, and um, made a pyramid. Very artistic. A pyramid of all the lampshades, the uh, television. The, uh, didn't, didn't break anything. Nothing was damaged, but it was beautifully arranged in this pyramid. <laughs> Did he put a mint on top of it? <laughs> no, no. It's time to revive the dying art of telly tossing in a segment called Toss the Telly. David, Loeen, come to my hotel room, please. Thank you, madam. Loeen, Loeen, Loeen. Please don't take my man. Uh, as Who's you can that? see, we <laughs> have constructed a proper hotel room here. Not only do we have a broken window, we have some alcohol. We actually have a rock star <laughs> on the bed from Master's Apprentices, Jim Keyes. <laughs> People might think that Jim has done a lovely thing by coming in here just for this show tonight, but he actually sleeps here at the ABC. <laughs> <laughs> Things aren't going well. He's in the same leather pants he's been in since yeah. episode three. That's true. Right. Right. I'm still here. <laughs> nice to have you back. <laughs> Basically, here's how it's going to work. Your job is to toss a telly out of the hotel window. We have a bunch of tellies here. You get mm -hmm. five each. You get a point for each telly that goes through. I reckon we'll start with Loeen. All right. If you'd like to make your way to the telly tossing area, uh, we'll get stuck into it. Jim. Are you feeling safe there? Oh, this takes me back, mate, I tell you. Great. <laughs> You've been through this. Yeah, I have. Have uh, you ever you... tossed a telly? Yeah, well, yeah, but we did. We missed the swimming pool. Some of the debris got into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> that count. Where were you, by the way? Colac. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Colac. <laughs> Lovely to have you with the show. Loeen, are you ready? Are you going to pass me the telly? I am. Do you feel protected there? I'm all right, mate. No, I'm Would fine. Would you like protection of some sort? No, 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 I'm fine, thanks. A box or something, you mean? Well, I actually do have one. If you, you do? One <laughs> all right, I'm going to one of those in there. Right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Fine. Head down. Uh, there's no time limit. Okay. It's accuracy that counts. All right. First telly, go. Oh. Okay. Oh, we need a bit more on, Floine. Oh. oh! You've broken the window. That's a good thing, though. Very good. Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> um, over the window's well. good, too. Is it? Uh, <clears throat> One point for Loeen David. Let's see how much you've learnt from John Farnham over your years. <laughs> Five tellies. Oh. Give it your best shot. Oh, oh no! Oh. <laughs> I love the way that was a netball pass. <laughs> That's me. That was absolutely superb. If I stand doing this... <laughs> oh, come on! Now, I'm sticking to the netball technique. Yep, I think it's working best for you. Oh! oh. Hang on, I'll fix that. If you can knock it through with this one, I reckon we're flying. Yes, it works. And this is your final television. Oh, I'd say that's two points for I you, David. So. Uh, that was one point for you, Loeen. And, uh, and uh, three extra points for Jim Keyes just for turning up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Back to the panel, everyone. <laughs> Uh, at the end of that particular round, uh, Myth's team on 12 points, Alan's team out in front on 15 points. It is time now for the final countdown. Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Which composer was responsible for penning Peter Gunn and Moon River? Henry Mancini. Exactly. Oh, By what name is Sherilyn Sarkeesian La... Yes. Sure. That is Cher. Well done, Louine. Name the 70s funk star who was also briefly married to Miles Davis. Betty Davis. Betty Davis, Louine. Which famous solo artist changed his name to an unpronounceable symbol in the 90s? Prince. Prince it was. Wow. What is the name of his semi-autobiographical semi film in the mid-80s? Purple Rain. Yes, it was, Alan Bro. What is the federal member for Kingsford Smith's musical claim to fame? Did he used to be in Midnight Oil? Yes, he's Peter Garrett. Peter Garrett. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, she ain't exactly pretty, ain't exactly small. 42, 39, 56, you could say she's got it all. The question is, who is she? My mum. <laughs> <laughs> is that...? Is that... <laughs> she's... 
<laughs> Does someone on this team want to take that chance to give a real answer? It rings a bell, but no, I couldn't say what it is. I'm afraid you lose a point. It was Rosie from ACDC's Whole oh, Lot of oh, Rosie. Oh, yeah. Which oh, yeah. lyricist collaborated with Andrew Lloyd Webber on such hit musicals as Evita? Tim Rice. Yes, it was. Oh. Name the legendary New York club in which bands like the Talking Heads... CBGBs. CBGBs. Yes. Wow. Which country hosts the Montreux Jazz Festival? Switzerland. Switzerland. Well done, David. Why did Johnny Cash shoot a man in Reno? Just to watch him die. Yep. This is your final question. Oh. According to MC Hammer, what can't you touch? This. This. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you at the end of the rounds, Alan's team ended up on 17 points. Miff's team hit the lead with 19. Oh. Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Terry Siakis, <laughs> David Hirschfelder, Loeen Carmen, and Ross Noble. <laughs> and of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. <laughs> Thanks for watching Smiths and Smiths. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia.